and plays Josanthius From among all of his slaves to join him Dressed in Heracles' lion hide on a journey To the underworld where the sun don't shine To Pluto's domain is where Dionysus will head To bring back Euripides from the ranks of the dead For when he died, Athens was left with much less In terms of poetry, they were rather bereft And so as Anthias complains about his bad back Heracles mocks Dionysus for his weak ass But Dionysus knows that he came here on a quest So he asks Heracles which way to hell is best Heracles responds One way is cheap Just climb to the top of a tower and leap Or if you prefer you can just take the path it takes a bit more time, but it's less of a bloodbath. Dionysus chooses, of course, to take the road where he meets with a corpse who offers to bear their load. Xanthius is outraged at the price which he demands, even though he is a slave who could really use a hand. Eventually, our heroes encounter the ferryman who takes Dionysus across Lake Acheron. Xanthius has to walk around cause he's a slave while Dionysus on the boat sails to the underworld cave along the way. Dionysus has a rap battle with a bunch of frogs that he met in the lake. Yeah, we thought that the frogs were going to be more important, too. When the adventurers finally rendezvous at the gate, they're stopped by its keeper, who for Heracles has only hate. Dionysus fears the guard. He isn't very brave, so he switches his outfit with that of his slave. Then along come some virgin dancers who ask, which one's Heracles and Xanthias answers? Heracles is me, that's what he said. And so the dancers lead Xanthias back to their bed. But Dionysus, god of orgies, wants to be their one. So he takes the disguise back, prepared to have some fun. But when more of Heracles' enemies appear, Dionysus switches back with Xanthius, filled with fear. The gatekeeper returns and starts whipping both of them. Xanthius and Dionysus to determine who is really him. Xanthius, being a slave, is prepared to take the hit, while Dionysus starts to cry like a little bitch. Eventually it doesn't matter, Pluto lets them into hell, whatever lies ahead. Only time can tell when Dionysus sees the souls, he finds himself in luck, he meets Euripides, the last playwright who didn't totally suck. And since Euripides' death started this quest, Dionysus prepares to bring back the best But as he ventures further into the depths of hell He meets another who might even be better He can't quite tell His name is Iskulus, this noble bard And determining who's better proves rather hard So they have a Competition, Aeschylus and Euripides, they spit verses and metaphors, insults and similes. Dionysus presides over this perpetual duel, both playwrights trying to prove the other the fool. A scale is brought forth to end the debate, to weigh their words, and to determine their fate.
Aeschylus wins the contest for his poetry was greater Leaving Euripides as loser the inferior debater And so the former is released from Pluto's ghastly chains While the latter in the darkness of the underworld remains Yeah, we thought that the frogs were going to be much more important too Yeah, we thought that the frogs were going to be much more important to the plot of this story